Hello and welcome back to Arno de Garden. Now it is beginning of September, so we need to do the jobs for the month for September. The being autumn, we have autumn raspberries to pick. We also have some lovely blackberries. Now we did, we were out here yesterday actually to pick these, so they look a bit sparse at the moment, but uh, you can see there's plenty that are now beginning to turn. And tomorrow when we come out here, uh, there'll be loads more to pick. Um, so yeah, still plenty of soft fruits to come. And I've been actually asked uh, a number of questions about the soft fruit, about some of the prunings and when to prune them, especially with blackberries um, and the red currants and the black currants. Well, all of that is still to come this year, so do stay tuned to the channel and uh, keep an eye, keep your notifications on um, so that you know when we upload the videos because um, those answers will come as it becomes the right time for these jobs to be done. We shall film them and you shall see them on this channel. So what can we be sowing during the month of September? Well, as you can imagine, the list is diminishing all of the time as we approach the autumn and winter period here in the UK. However, during September, there are things that you can still sow and the kind of things that you can sow can either be sown indoors or outdoors at this point particular moment in time and you can be sowing things such as lamb's lettuce, uh, other forms of lettuce and radish. Uh, rocket leaves, they're all quite good and can go into the ground. Pak choy, they can go into the ground um, and you can eat them as baby leaves. September is a really great month for sowing all forms of salad seeds. There's plenty to plant out into the garden during the month of September. Now, last month we sowed our overwintering spring onions, cabbages and spinach. And all of those will be ready to go out into the ground during September. And of course, also in September, if you haven't done so already, because I know a lot of you out there sow your potatoes for Christmas during August, it's not too late in September. Also, any salad plants that you sow during August, they will also be ready to be put out into the ground during September to give you a nice late autumn harvest. Watering for September, it doesn't really change from month to month. Anything that you first transplant into the garden wants to be really well watered in. And of course, anything that's approaching its harvest wants to be well watered and a good example of this would be celeriac you can see the celeriac of a, of a nice size but they should get much bigger than that their harvest time is approaching um, here where we live i anticipate being taking the first of these towards the end of october so by giving them a good watering every week now and maybe a little more if the weather really does remain dry as it is, we still haven't seen any significant rainfall here, um, that will help to bulk those out. Same with leeks. They do their bulking up from now onwards. Um, and for things like the oarsmen, uh, their time again is toward the end of October. The poor Bella, they follow on from that November, December. 
Now September is often a really good month for harvests, not least because you've still got things that have been uh, giving you good harvest through the summer months, but they do overlap into September and especially with all this glorious weather that we've been having. So things such as your runner beans and your French beans, they're still producing in abundance. Um, and like I say, providing they've got flowers on them and they're providing you with beans, they'll keep going until the first frost come along or until some really, really cold and damp weather comes along. But uh, any frost, of course, will immediately kill them off. Um, still got carrots. You can see here I've already harvested a couple here that because uh, myself and Mr W want some carrots for later. Um, and there we are. Well, one thing I would say is that when you are harvesting your vegetables, you know, just make sure that you take all the greenery off. And, you know, as you harvest your brassicas, anything like that, when you're taking the final harvest, make sure you twist them out, just leaving the roots in there and returning the plant to the compost heap so that that can help feed your soil for next season. And then your ground is then ready for anything that you want to replant, like any salads that you want to sow this month, things such as radish or lettuce, anything like that. And of course, if you're not going to be planting something there, it's still a really good idea to ensure that all the debris, all the dead leaves and stems are pulled out of the ground because they will cause diseases as we get into autumn it might not happen this month but sometime in autumn it will get much damper and much cooler you know any of these uh, stems and leaves that you just leave lying about they will encourage things like mr slug diseases into your garden so it's better to get them get them onto the compost heap where you want all that to happen so that you get a good breakdown in your compost heap and then if you're like us new dig you can then spread your one to two inch layer of compost on top so that it's ready for next spring or whenever you want to use it for planting but equally if you're not like us you still have preparation to do and that will involve clearly turning the soil over and adding your compost or manure into the soil as you're turning it over now while we are uh, on about harvests um, you can see that the honey boot is doing really quite well we've got one or two of these on here now um, and you know as we start to get towards the end of September uh, you know you might find some of your squash actually now becoming ripe and ready for you to harvest depends on when you planted them um, we've already had a couple of our curry squash we've already harvested those um, because they were ready do keep an eye on your squash uh, because you see that they are ready, then you can get them harvested, less strain on the plant, and then it could put its resources into some of the smaller ones, which are yet to swell up. Uh, you can see here that we got some butternuts on the way. It's looking a nice one. It is their time now to get going. Um, and I did mention earlier when we were talking about the watering of the uh, leeks and the celeriac, it's also a good idea at this time of the year to be ensuring that your squash don't go without water either. Uh, you know, they are water loving plants. They do love the sunshine as well. We've got the sunshine, but if we can provide them with that moisture, then that all adds up to really nice, large and very luscious squash. Now in the glass house or polytunnel, um, whichever you have, there's still lots going on in here with harvest and again especially all this lovely warm weather that we're having um everything in the greenhouse has just been so abundant this year and you can see we've still got lots of tomatoes that we either need to pick or are going to come but just because we are getting into september you know please don't ignore those jobs that uh, we've talked about for most of the year i.e side shoots there's a little one here that's starting to come you may think that that's pretty unimportant now there's another one here, look. But what it means is it's going to put his energy into that. And those flowers are not going to bring you any tomatoes now. They are a month to six weeks away from producing any kind of fruit, which is going to bring us to mid to late October. They're not going to be red. So if you keep on top of those, that means that all this fruit that you see here now, even the ones that are green, 
they have a fair to middling chance of actually turning red and ready for us to eat. And at the very least, you know, they'll be this sort of colour and we can just leave them on the windowsill just to finish their final ripening up. Also, you can see that we've been removing leaves as we've been going up and as, as each truss actually is, has been harvested, then just continue to take the leaves off because that will then give these a chance to then ripen up. So things like this here, this one can come out actually. We don't need this one anymore. It's going yellow anyway. So we can take that off. And now those tomatoes are now in full view of any light and sunshine that we're going to get through September. So to ensure that you go through these, these ones here, these uh, money maker here, you know, these are big plants we can do with getting some of these off here. So it's a job that myself and Mrs. W will start to get on with. Now, as you know, we also have aubergines and they've somewhat recovered and they're having a renaissance uh, after they didn't look very good at all. And we do have aubergines coming. They're looking really quite good, actually. Um, so looking forward to some lovely fresh aubergines. Well, what I am going to start to do is to diminish some of these flowers that are coming. You can see here's a nice aubergine that's appearing. So it is producing its fruit. But yeah, it's going to start to get to a point now where, you know, we're going to maybe start taking some of these flowers off because uh, they're not going to have time to actually develop their fruits and ripen just like the tomatoes. You know, time here in the UK is getting short. We are not far away now from uh, the equinox that happens towards the end of October. And of course, it's now the beginning of September. We literally have a six to eight week window now in which to bring all of the things in here onto a harvest before the daylight hours will be reduced. Which is good and we want to make as much uh, of that daylight as possible and warmth and you can see probably down here that we now have our jalapenos and they're starting to change colour. So we want those to ripen as soon as possible. Now we talk you know obviously an awful lot about vegetables here but as you know we also have our flowers, the annuals that we plant in the garden to encourage uh, all as much wildlife into the garden as possible and as diverse wildlife as possible. Um, but we are getting to the time of year now where you can start thinking about collecting your seeds. And you can see these are going over now and I know Mrs W is going to be very very busily going around to find some seed. So. These are some marigold, that's how easy it is. And you can get so many seeds from just the one spent flower head. And we have lots of flowers. The other thing is, is that obviously you want to be deheading them anyway, because you can see there's still buds coming on here. And these again, marigolds, like many of our vegetables, they will keep going strongly until the very first frost of the season. And for us, here in Norfolk and that's going to be somewhere in November. Usually mid-November, it can happen a little earlier, sometimes a little later, but on average it is around about November the 14th when we see our first frost of the year. Um, but what I have found um, since, you know, by growing these is that um, it takes a pretty harsh frost to get rid of these. When we get the first frost, they tend to be quite light ones, you know, maybe a minus one, zeros doesn't actually really kill these off <laughs> stone dead um, but as soon as you get the first harsh ones it will so yeah just keep even if you don't want to save the seed make sure you do keep deheading your flowers so that these have a chance to come along they'll keep making more buds same goes for the zinnias and the chrysanthemums uh, and the dahlias that we grow too when the tadgetes what I just showed you here with these uh, marigolds, you can do exactly the same with these tadgetes. The seed heads are just here. It's just a question of, do you pick them off? Let them continue to dry out. And then as you can see, you get seeds like this. They'll be slightly smaller. It's a smaller flower. 
but essentially they're from the same family so the seeds will look exactly the same and all you need to do is to store them away in a paper envelope or a paper bag keep them dry and away from light and don't let them freeze and yeah you'll be good to go and able to plant your own flower seeds next spring when it becomes time to plant them there's always something to do most months but as we know coming to september and obviously next month into october and november and december those jobs get less so there's less of them to do but they tend to become larger jobs and they take you a little bit more time like the preparation of your beds so there's still always something to do and although there may be less to do, they are no less important than the things that we do the rest of the year. You know, it's the, the sowing of the seeds and the planting out of the plants, you know, that's, uh, if you like, that's the highlight. Everybody looks forward to that. But actually, it's what we do during September, October, November and December that actually makes us successful gardeners as we go into the following year. So do come back to the jobs for the month as we continue to do them for the rest of the year because um, I'm sure that you'll find plenty of helpful tips and hints from us uh, of the things that you can be doing. And as usual, we, uh, we always talk about the jobs for the month, but we also film quite a large proportion of those jobs as we go through the month. So if you want to see how we go about it, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications so that you know whenever we upload a video. Do let us know in the comments below exactly what you'll be doing during September. If you're going to be, going to be doing something different. Um, you know, people grow different things and they do different things at different times of the year. So do let us know in the comments below because um, I was, you know, we don't know everything um, and we like to learn about what other people are doing and they will also help form the basis for the jobs for next year because we can add those to our list so that we all know exactly what we're going to be doing. And we shall see you next time when we shall be planting potatoes for Christmas.